How's it going YouTube? I'm Landon and welcome back to another most amazing top 10 video. So recently I've been making videos about prison and longest serving inmates and I've come across many people who have served a lot of time in prison who were innocent. It's a really sad situation but this is the top 10 longest prison sentences served by innocent people part 2. If you guys want part 1 click right over here and part 1 was actually 2-3 years ago and I look totally different. You guys should go check it out but that video got a a lot of views so I'm not sure why we didn't continue it but now we're continuing the series. Alright so enough of that let's start off number 10 we have Brandon Dassey who is serving a life in prison without eligibility for parole in 2048. His convictions were first degree murder, second degree sexual assault mutilation of a corpse. That is just so messed up the victim was Teresa Heldach. Brandon was 16 years old when he was sentenced to prison after his confession tape was seen by a juror. Well after 10 years Brandon Dassey was finally released from prison because evidence showed that interrogators forced Brendan Dassey into a confession. Brendan Dassey has a severe learning disability and he didn't understand that what he was saying when he was being tricked into his confession. Watch. Come on, Brendan, be honest. You can do it. Just tell us the truth. I grabbed her arm, put it on the side and tied it up. Let me bring her outside and saw her. Why don't you draw where the blood stains are? Brendan Dassey literally made up what happened to Teresa Halbach because he thought he would just tell the police what they wanted to hear and then he would just go to school. He That's where he wanted to be. He just wants to leave that office and just go back to school and be normal again. It's really sad if you ask me. All right, number nine, we have Marvin Anderson who has served 15 years in prison and he became the 99th person in the United States to be exonerated due to post-conviction DNA testing. Marvin was convicted of robbery, sodomy, abduction, and rape. These are some very serious crimes and it's ridiculous that in investigators convicted the wrong person. The suspect was able to get away with these brutal crimes, like the actual suspect, not this guy who was framed. It's been so many years after the crime, so who knows if this person will ever be caught, and who knows if this person went on to commit more of these horrific, gruesome crimes. Number 8 is a crazy situation about Richard Jones, who is a father that was sentenced away to prison for a crime that he didn't commit. Richard was convicted of armed robbery. Well, here's the crazy part. It took 17 years for investigators to realize that it wasn't Richard Jones who actually committed the crime. It was a look-alike. It was someone that looked exactly like him. Here's Richard on the left and here is the actual person who committed the crime on the right. Uh, is this real life right now? How do you mess this up? Joan spent 17 years for someone else's crime. During the hearing witnesses just couldn't tell these two men apart. I mean see the resemblance but why don't you take DNA tests? There's no resemblance with DNA. Or you can just look at camera footage of the crime and you, you will notice that there's a gun. Why don't you look for the actual gun? You can't just convict a man to a serious crime without being 100%. But on this list we learn that police and investigators have just failed to do their jobs. What the heck are we paying them for? Number 7 Robert Jones. Robert was wrongly convicted for rape and manslaughter following the murder of a British tourist, Julia Stoke. Robert served 23 years for someone else's horrific crime. After being arrested for his crime, Robert Jones thought it was a practical joke, but he was actually taken into the homicide division. This guy was being questioned. Well, after going to the homicide division, he thought he was just going to be, you know, questioned and then he was going to be released. You know, he was a witness to this whole thing. Well, he ended up being locked away for life because of this. Robert had to sit in a very small jail cell thinking about what just happened. And to be honest, there's just no explanation, but the investigators just failed to do their job. Robert has had no previous convictions. He has had a clean rap sheet. Nothing should have directed police officers to thinking that this guy right here was the suspect. And again, why don't you guys be 100% that this is the actual guy? Alright, now we have Kenneth Adams at number 6. Back in 1978, Kenneth Adams, along with three other men, who has been known as the Ford Heights Four, were wrongly convicted of rape and also double homicide. Kenneth was sentenced to 75 years in prison. It took 8 18 years for DNA testing to exonerate him from these crimes. Kenneth filed a lawsuit of $36 million against the police officers involved in the original investigation. The investigators who failed at their job. This was the largest civil rights payment in United States history at the time. Kenneth received a settlement of $8 million. This is for sure life changing money, but 18 years of his life has been taken away and there's no amount of money that can, you know, bring that back. These were one of the most important years of his life. This was a time where people usually, you know, they start to get married they have kids, they really get into their careers, but all of that was just stripped from him. Number 5 is Billy James Smith. He served nearly 20 years in prison for rape that happened in a laundry room of a building of the victim. After the rape, the victim, who was left unidentified, told her boyfriend that she was raped. She 
said that someone with a knife asked her for money, then they dragged her into a grassy field near the complex and that's where it happened. She was able to get away and she saw the man run towards the apartment complex that she lives in. She thought it was someone who lived in the building or someone who lived nearby the building. The victim then described the man she thought who it was. Police quickly arrested Billy Smith for rape. In court for 20 years, Billy wanted to get a DNA testing but it was denied because semen was found in the victim's rape kit. At trial, the state claimed that there was no evidence that the victim had sex with anyone in 24 hours previous to the rape, so the semen must belong to the perpetrator. So this was based on assumption. Well, after numerous of appeals, the Texas Court of Criminals appeals finally granted Billy Smith DNA testing. The test came back and proved that the semen did not belong to him. The semen was actually from, you know, the person who committed the horrific crime. This makes me so upset because they should have just DNA tested this guy just decades ago. If you're going to convict someone, I mean, spend the money to perform what you need to do to be 100% correct. At number four, we have Stephen Barnes, who served 20 years in prison as an innocent person. I can see now why in jail there's that, you know, common saying, you know, everyone's always innocent. Well, you know what? I'm starting to believe it now. Because, man, Stephen was convicted of murdering 16-year-old Kimberly Simon in New York City. Her body was found on the side of a dirt road, and she was raped and strangled to death. Several witnesses told the police that they saw Stephen around the time of the crime. Stephen was questioned for 12 straight hours. He was interrogated. He took a polygraph test. The investigators said it was inconclusive. Stephen was actually released after being interrogated because police couldn't link him to the crime. But for some reason, he was called back and he was tried in front of a jury that apparently saw him as guilty. This case wasn't overturned for 20 years after the Innocent Project stepped in. They reopened the case with proper DNA tests and it was proven that Stephen wasn't the suspect. The suspect is still at large. All right, number three, we have a celebrity who is a professional boxer known as Hurricane. This might sound familiar to you guys. We're talking about Reuben Carter, who was a middleweight boxer. He was wrongly convicted of murder and was later released 20 years later. There was racism involved in this conviction. Back in 1966, police arrested Reuben and his friend John Artis for a triple homicide committed in a bar in New Jersey. Police found his car nearby the crime scene and they searched it and they found ammunition that fit the weapons used in the murder. Police for some reason took no fingerprints at the crime scene. They didn't really look into it at all. Also, police lacked the facilities to conduct a paraffin test for a gunshot residue. Police thought this crime was quickly solved and it was a wrap. This story inspired a movie titled Hurricane. Denzel Washington played Reuben Carter. It's actually a really good movie. I highly recommend you guys watch it. I really want to show this quick bit from the trailer. You are sentenced to be imprisoned for the remainder of your natural life. I'm innocent. I've committed no crime. Crime's been committed against me. Donald Eugene Gates spent 27 years in prison and he comes in at number two. Donald Gates was in prison after being convicted for rape and murder of a college student in Washington, D.C. The victim was 21 year old Catherine Schilling. Catherine was shot five times in the head. Well, clearly, police officers didn't do their jobs right that night because they made a big mistake. They locked up the wrong person. After 27 years, Catherine's rapist and killer were eventually identified through DNA tests of the semen. When Donald was released, it was sickening because they just gave him $75 and a bus ticket to Ohio. This is when the Innocence Project stepped in to get justice. This case was turned into a federal lawsuit. The DC government agreed to make a settlement of $16.65 million. This was the largest paid to an individual in state history. At number one, we have one of the highest profile cases and it's still actually going on today. We're talking about Stephen Avery. We learned a ton about Stephen Avery after the successful Netflix original show called Making a Murder. This has to be one of the greatest documentaries that you'll ever watch. I highly recommend it. If you haven't watched it, go to Netflix and just... Stephen Avery is from Manitowoc County, Wisconsin, which is in the States, and after serving 18 years in prison, he was released. He was sentenced at the age of 22 years old. He was accused of sexual assault. Stephen Avery was exonerated by DNA testing. Well, here is where the story gets crazier, and why Stephen Avery is number one on this list. Just two years after being released, Stephen Avery was charged again 
and for murder. Stephen Avery was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. Stephen and his lawyers think that he was set up once again by local police investigators. Stephen has now spent most of his life behind bars. We don't know if he is innocent for the second charge, but that would be crazy. Just imagine he was innocent for a second time. Making a Murderer Season 2 will be coming out soon. I cannot wait to see it. So it was promised to come out later at the end of this year. Well, there you guys have it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you guys very soon in a new Most Amazing Top 10 video.